start with the committee's decision. They decide you guys were not going to be in the 2022 college football playoff. What's your reaction to that? Well, you know, we're obviously disappointed. Uh, we wanted to see our team have an opportunity to play and get in the playoffs. But, you know, we're going to get an opportunity to play someone somewhere in a good game. And uh, that's going to be an opportunity for our players to create value for themselves and uh, show what kind of team we really have. When you build a national championship standard here, and, and this is sort of the context of this season, what is the opportunity for growth for the program in a, in a bowl game like this? Well, I think you learn a lot sometimes with disappointment, uh, how you respond to it. Uh, there's always a, an opportunity in any adversity that you have to face. We obviously faced, you know, quite a bit this year, you know, in the middle of the season. And uh, I think the players responded to it well, and this is going to be another opportunity for them looking forward uh, to be able to respond uh, in a positive way and build on the future. I know you're going to speak with your team later today. What, what will your message be? Well, I, I just think it's, it comes down to, you know, trying to establish the kind of respect uh, that we'd like to have for this team uh, and what we did and didn't accomplish, what we did and didn't do. Uh, but what we do in the future, what we do moving forward, is going to determine that to a large degree. Carried the day for Ohio State over Alabama. Was it simply that they had one loss and Alabama had two? Well, I think you look at the big wins as well as part of this and the win that um, Ohio State has over um, uh, Notre Dame, the win they have over Penn State. Compare that to Alabama with the wins over Texas. Uh, Mississippi State, some other close games. And again, keep in mind that the Michigan game did get away from them, but it was a one-score game uh, uh, early in the fourth quarter. And as we looked at the total body of work that we had, the committee was comfortable with Ohio State at four and Alabama at five. Okay, then one spot above them, if you look at the entire body of work, and I understand the idea that TCU uh, played overtime game, tough loss to Kansas State yesterday, you could probably pretty easily make a football judgment that Ohio State was deserving of moving up. So why TCU three and Ohio State four? Again, you're looking at body of work. We talked earlier in the year about uh, being maybe a little bit more balanced in, in their defense. And you look at the last five games, I believe they're giving up about 20 points a game on defense. Uh, the way that game flowed yesterday and their ability to come back and their ability to play the way they do, Max Duggan, uh, what a warrior to, to, to go through the game the way he did to put them in a position to take the game not only to overtime but a chance to win that game. And again, as a committee, we looked at it in full body of work. Uh, a lot of respect for Kansas State in that room as well. Uh, that win um, uh, kind of won the day uh, for uh, TCU to be the number three team. Okay, what impact did avoiding a rematch of Michigan and Ohio State in the semifinals have? on the discussions? It, it really wasn't discussed uh, as we went into it. Our goal was to get the top four teams right and make sure that we believe that you know, Georgia number one, Michigan number two, TCU number three, Ohio State number four for the reasons I was just talking about with regards to TCU and Ohio State. Again, our goal was to get the right four, ultimately the right 25 as we go through this and make sure we got them in the right order regardless of uh, matchups and, and conferences and the rest of it. Okay, so I, I just want to be clear. So no one in the course of this discussion ever said, let's stay away from the Michigan-Ohio State rematch, at least in the semifinals. That was never uttered in the room. It was not talked about in the room. Again, we were looking at getting the right four teams. And as we went piece by piece by piece, we ended up in the order that we did um, with TCU 3 and again, based on the body of work over the course of the season. The Georgia, the Georgia Bulldogs. Bulldogs. No surprise here is Georgia, the reigning national champion. You know, they go back there, and they're the fourth different team to be a number one seed in the college yeah, football playoff. Yeah, typical number one team. They just got better as the year went on. Dealt with the pressure of being the defending champs. The offense, you know, defense gets a lot of the attention because of Kirby. But the offense this year, juggernaut. Whoever matches up with them better get used to 12 personnel, running game, play action pass and a quarterback that plays with a chip on his shoulder. Alabama, Clemson, LSU previously have been number one seeds in the college football playoff. Now Georgia joins them at 13 and 0. And number two, we assume we're about to see Michigan here. There they are. How about Michigan? Soft non-conference schedule to start the year, but that win against Ohio State on the road, 
That was an absolute statement, winning it by 22. And this is a very complete team offensively and defensively. Of course, we know about the injury to Blake Corum at running back. They're going to need J.J. McCarthy to continue playing the way he's been playing these last two games versus whoever they end up facing in the semifinal. But right now, this is the most explosive offense I've yeah. seen from Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, and seven's pretty good. I know Corn's yeah, yeah. down. Donovan Edwards. <laughs> Donovan Edwards looks good. You can yeah. see the, the players behind Gene Wojciechowski da dancing. There's with the yeah. Good. yeah, that is a confident ball club. Oh like, yeah, we know we're number. They two. feel different, Let's don't they, go. David? Don't and they feel different from last year? I think that's year? the big thing. You got a lot of experience last year. You were happy to beat yeah. Ohio State. Happy to beat there. Now year. you're like. Okay. They got unfinished business. I got some, bin I got like some business to accomplish. J.J. McCarthy yeah. said that just recently. Yeah. He said that loss last year to Georgia no in the semifinal, that is con that's continuing to yeah. motivate us, and that's going to fire them up in the postseason. Okay, now just a quick note here. Georgia is going to play in Atlanta in one semifinal because you get the geographical prep number one. That will place Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl in Phoenix. And the question is, yep. will it be a rematch oh. against Ohio State or – Someone else sitting at number three. Let's have a look at the third ranked team. Hey. All right. TCU oh. holds his place. This is what you expected. I will admit somewhat yep. surprising. I thought Ohio State would get that third spot. What do you think? TCU has earned this spot. They did it all season long. And so as we've talked about this team, and right there in the middle of the season, when they played four ranked opponents <laughs> and they won those games, and people started to Look at Doug. Look at Doug. Look at Doug. He's still trying to catch his breath. And he's still trying to catch his breath. This is what the they, they've earned, not just this season, but building up to this. Sonny Dykes done a terrific job with his team in this in his first season. But this is a respect that they earned this spot. And it speaks to what they did all season long, not just yesterday, not just losing in overtime in a three-point game, but what they've done all season long, they deserve to be at number three. Well, I think the thing with TCU all year long was a lot of close games, right? Yeah. Back and forth, and, and you heard Boo talk about it, the chairman. And the guy, he said defense had to improve. You saw the defense improve a little bit down the stretch, but we know they're explosive. We know they remained undefeated all throughout the season and then lost in the championship game. So I thought it was an interesting debate. It'd be a good matchup. But you know, it's really interesting, too, with Michigan and TCU, you have two teams making the college football playoff with quarterbacks who didn't start the season right. as the, as the, in Duggan's case, not the starter at all, and in McCarthy's case, not the undisputed starter. Now, TCU uh, said that they're the second team to make the playoff when unranked in the preseason. I want to posit this and build a little drama here. Ohio State, you know, been playing the conference championship game, they have the blowout loss. Alabama's got the closer losses. Maybe we're back to a 2017 thing. While we spent last night saying TCU or Alabama, maybe it's Ohio State or Alabama here at number four. Are you you showing now, or are you trying to create drama? We, I just built the drama. There That's we what go. we do. Oh, it's Ohio yeah. State. There yeah. it is. No drama. So hey. the Buckeyes are in, and we don't have the rematch of the Michigan-Ohio State game yet. Instead, Ohio State will have to do what a lot of Buckeye fans thirst to do, go into SEC territory, prove a point against an SEC oh. team. I think these teams are supposed to play in the regular season, and because of some scheduling things um, in the near future, they decided not to, so we'll get it. In Atlanta instead. And I don't think anybody disputes how talented Ohio State is. They're, they're one of the talented, most talented teams in the country. Mm -hmm. They got stars. They got a chance to get a little bit healthy, too, with some of those guys. And so Ohio State's going to come in. And, and what did you say yesterday, Kurt? What did you I, say I yesterday? I can't remember. <laughs> in, in the many flights, <laughs> what did you say yesterday about everybody's going to tell them no, for I, the next however I, many they're, weeks? They're, they're going to be poor mouth for four, three or four weeks. Yep. They're going to show up. Whether it's good enough or not, there's always a team that shows up disrespected. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody that should show up more disrespected and, and angry than Ohio State. It's, it's a team the committee liked all along. They were number two in every college football playoff ranking up until last week. The resume stands for itself. Impressive win against Penn State and Notre Dame. And also from the eye test, too, watching them, they're much more complete than they've been in years past. Their defense is a lot better this year under first-year D.C. Jim Knowles. Ohio State, this is a team that uh, is going to be looked at as back, back, backing into this Final Four. What better way to try to earn some respect? I would argue two, two teams in two venues in the postseason, are the toughest, a good LSU, LSU team in the Superdome. Mm -hmm. You don't want to play that game. Nope. And playing Georgia in Atlanta. I mean, you talk about energy in a building. Mm -hmm. So if you want to try to get redemption, well, there's no better way to get redemption if you can't to try to stand up to Georgia, Kirby Smart, 
in that building. There's a lot of people at home right now shouting, too, because of what they last saw from Ohio State, right? Losing by 22 points and getting blown out at home against Michigan. People got to remember, though, teams have gotten beat badly before and still got in, right? Happened to Georgia back in 2017, took a bad loss against Auburn, still made it in. Notre Dame got beat bad by Clemson yep. in the ACC title game by over 20 points in 2020 and still got in. Over the course of the year, the entire resume, Ohio State was a dominant team scoring a bunch of points and playing better defense. And that was reflected in the college football playoff rankings each and every week. This is the third worst loss, to your point, by an eventual playoff team. It's the second worst to the Notre Dame loss that you mentioned. The difference with the Notre Dame loss is they had beaten the team that beat them early yeah, in the yeah. season they, when they played Clemson twice. But the 22-point loss by Ohio State will be the third worst overall by a team that eventually made the playoff field. Note, too, that on New Year's Eve, what a way uh, to ring out 2022. 8 o'clock Eastern time, Georgia and Ohio State in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That will be preceded by the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, Michigan and TCU.